Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about involutions, what this involution function is and the pointwise trap when dealing with functional equations. So this is a question that does justice to both of these topics and these two topics are probably one of the most repeated but also one of the most important topics in uh, when it comes to functional equations and algebra in general. And you really need to know a little bit about these two topics if you want to solve a good level of functional equations question. And I'm going to demonstrate you two ways of solving this. The first one is going to involve the pointwise trap and how we can eradicate the pointwise trap. And the second method is going to completely remove the pointwise trap. You just don't need to consider the pointwise trap at all in the second method, right? Because a lot of people get confused with pointwise trap. So um, the second method is going to involve, it's going to not involve pointwise trap from any standpoint, right? So it's going to be a pretty interesting discussion and I hope you enjoy it. So this is the problem number four from the Kyrgyzstan National Math Olympiad in the year 2012. And in this video, we're going to consider involutions and bijection. I'm going to prove that an involution function is necessarily bijective. Then we are going to learn what the substitution strategy and point by step is. And at the end, we have book sessions for National Math Olympiads and of course, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. So let's see what they have uh, given to us over here. So find all function f defined on reals to reals so that it satisfies this gain functional equations for all reals x and y. Now, regarding functional equations, one of the best ways to start it is just me plug in some simple values. X equals to zero, Y is equal to zero is always a great starting point. And when I do that, I'll get F of F of zero squared plus F of zero is equal to zero. So I get this result when I just plug in X equals to zero and Y is equal to zero. Now, if I let T is equal to F of zero squared plus F of zero, what I'll realize is that F of T is equal to zero. Because if you just plug T in the uh, this equation and you'll get f of t is equal to zero as simple as that now because we know that f of t is equal to zero what i can maybe do is i can plug in x equals to t and i can plug in y is equal to x now when i do that all of the terms really involving f of t will get cancelled so for example this gets cancelled this gets cancelled and uh, over here we'll simply have the x and over here we'll have f of f of x so what we're really going to get is that f of f of x is equal to x now, now comes the part where we you know, discuss a little bit about the concepts, right? So f of f of x is essentially an involution. So whenever you have this condition that f of f of x, you repeat the function twice, you get back the number x, right? You take the, uh, you essentially take any input x, you uh, compound it with the function, you calculate f of x, then you take f of f of x, you get returned the input. And that is what we call as an involution function. So this is an involution and a little bit more rigorous definition of involution would probably be a function f so that f is equal to its inverse. So whenever we have this, we call it an involution function. So all functions such that the function is equal to its inverse are actually involution functions. So for example, um, f of x needs to be equal to f inverse x. So if I just take x on f on both sides over here, I'll get f of f of x is equal to x cause the function and its inverse actually get cancelled out over here so f of f of x is equal to x and uh, that was what we had received initially as well so such a function in which the function is equal to its inverse is called an involution function there are many examples of involution functions classic example would probably be f of x equals to x the identity function is indeed an involution function cause over here if i try to calculate f of f of x that would um, again really be x right because uh, it, it, it's an involution, right? So um, it's, it's, it's a pretty interesting question actually. And the interesting result about this is that all involutions are bijective, right? Or other involutions are bijective. And when you say bijective, it means that it's injective and surjective. It's one, one and onto, right? So I'm just gonna demonstrate a small proof that involutions are bijective. So first we'll check for injectivity, right? Injectivity. So again, like we standard way of checking injectivity, f of a is equal to f of b, and then we need to prove that a is equal to b. So if f of a is equal to f of b, I can just take the function f on both sides. So f of f of a is equal to f of f of b 
and uh, because f of f of x is equal to x f of f of a just becomes a and f of f of b just becomes b so if f of a is equal to f of b then that necessarily implies that a is going to be hence f is injective so we've therefore proven that an involution function is actually an injective function now we're going to test surjectivity right we're going to prove that an involution function is surjective as well now for any s that belongs to real numbers let's say for any s that belongs to a real number uh, let f of s be equal to x now kind of a similar technique we we'll just calculate f of f of s that will be equal to f of x now f of f of s by the definition of involution will be equal to s so therefore f of x equal to s and therefore our given function is on to surjective as well so it is surjective it is injective and hence our involution function is uh, indeed bijective right so all involutions are really bijective over here so essentially essentially what i try to say is that the function f over here that satisfies our given functional equations is actually an injective function and a surjective function and it's an bijective function therefore cause it's an involution right so this thing f of f of x will x is actually going to really 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 help us quite a bit in solving this problem okay great so let's proceed further now that we've uh, concluded the discussion let's maybe uh, return to our substitution strategy let's just put x equals to f of x and let's maybe put y is equal to y now when you do this you will get f of f of f of x squared plus f of y is equal to f of x times f of f of x plus y now f of f of x just simply becomes x so this just becomes uh what this becomes x squared plus this becomes f of y is equal to f of x times x or in other words x times f of x plus y now if you actually notice something this was there in our original problem as well right if you just notice it x times f of x plus y this was in our original problem as well so i can write that um f of basically what was given in the original question that is equal to the right hand side right now in the original question we had f of f of x whole squared plus f of y and this quantity is equal to x times f of x plus y this is from the original problem i'll write that as op over here so if you actually see the right hand side on uh, the equation that we obtained and the original problem is the same hence i can equate the left hand sides so f of x squared plus f of y will be equal to f of f of x squared plus f of y now keep in mind that the function f is an involution which means that is injective now what exactly is an injective function so in an injective function f of a is equal to f of b necessarily implies that a is equal to b so in a very elementary manner in a very rudimentary manner what we are really doing is we are cutting down these f's right f of a is equal to f of b and then just forget about the f and you directly write a is equal to b in an injective function now because f here is injective in fact it's bijective so you can just really cancel out both of these f's cause it's injective and you can equate whatever is inside so x squared plus f of y becomes equal to f of x squared plus f of y the substrand f of y from both sides so you will get f of x whole squared is equal to x squared so therefore f of x is indeed equal to plus minus x and are we done well no we are not quite done and uh, if you remember my earlier videos regarding functional equation there is something that we need to keep in mind and that is equal to the point y strap now what exactly is this point y strap a lot of people get really confused with this so over here we've established that f of x equal to x or f of x equal to minus x because when you take the square root it's either x or it is minus x it's not both and there might be a there might be a case where this function f might actually be a piecewise function and if it is piecewise then we need to determine for what values of x it is x and what for what values of x it is minus x so really we need to talk about the domain in quite a bit but essentially to avoid the point wise trap we need to prove that f of x equals to x for all x and f of x equals to minus x for all x this is it essentially what we need to prove in order to uh, reduce down or uh, let's say nullify the case where it might be a piecewise function and there's really a standard way to do that so we need to prove this we currently have this we currently have this and we need to prove this given assertion that it's x or minus x for all x right and there's really a standard way to do that so let f of a equals to a and um, f of b equals to minus b because really f of a can either be a or minus a 
and you're letting f of a to be a and similarly f of b becomes minus b now what we're going to do is just we're going to put x equals to a and y is equal to b in our original functional equation and you'll see that this just becomes f of a square minus b is equal to a square plus b on the right hand side now we can really just simplify this down into two cases so case one is f of a square minus b is indeed equal to a square minus b and the case two will be negative of that because f of x is either x or minus x right so over here f of a square minus b which is equal to a square plus b is equal to a square minus b you can really just cancel out this from both sides so you'll get b is equal to zero now in case two you will have f of a square minus b so f of x equals to minus x so here this will indeed become b minus a squared but from here we know that f of a square minus b is equal to a square plus b so a square plus b is b minus a square cancel out b from both sides you will get a is equal to zero so in one case we're getting b is equal to zero and in the other case we're getting a is equal to zero therefore the point by step is nullified and therefore f of x equals to plus minus x for all x belongs to real numbers and therefore this function f of x equal to plus minus x plus x and minus x satisfies our given functional equation right and that is essentially the solution so we have only two solutions f of x equal to x the identity function and f of x is equal to minus x right two functions satisfy our given functional equation so that was method one of solving it it obviously involved this uh, point by struggles i agree quite irritating and quite abstract at times so we're actually going to look at a method two of solving this and here we're going to completely forget about pointwise trap because we just don't need to worry about it and we're going to see why we don't need to worry about it okay anyways so we just plug in x equal to zero y is equal to zero in our original functional equation same step one that i had in method one as well and when you do that you'll get the same result obviously you'll get f of f of zero squared plus f of zero is equal to zero now again just kind of going through the same process I'll put t as f of 0 squared plus f of 0, right? So we obviously have f of t is equal to 0 and clear to see. This is what we did for our method 1 as well. Now, again, I'm going to plug in x equals to t and y is equal to x. So I'll get the result f of f of x is equal to x. Again, f is an involution. And over here, I'm going to plug in x equals to 0. So I'll get f of f of 0 is actually equal to 0. Now, do you actually notice something? See, f of t is equal to 0. Correct? And f of f of 0 is also equal to 0. Now, this given function f is bijective. So, it is 1, 1 and on 2. But more importantly, it's a 1, 1 correspondence. So, therefore, f of t must be equal to f of f of 0 because it's a 1, 1 correspondence. And because it is really injective, you can just cancel this out. So, t becomes f of 0. Now, to remind you, what was this t? So t was essentially this quantity, right? f of 0 whole squared plus f of 0, right? This was equal to t, but from over here, we know that t is equal to f of 0. You can just cancel out these from both sides. So therefore, you get this cool little result that f of 0 is equal to 0. Now, that's amazing because now what we can do is I can plug in x equals to f of x and I can plug in y is equal to 0. Now, now when I do that, I'll get f of f of f of x this quantity entire thing squared and um, over here you will have f of x times f of f of x something like uh, we'll get something like this so this just simply becomes x so f of x squared i should probably have another bracket over here is equal to x times f of x and this is a very interesting result this is a very cool result essentially what this telling us is whenever we have a squared quantity as the input a perfect square as the input you can really take one x out of it. So f of x squared is equal to x times f of x. So really, we've simplified down the complicated looking original functional equation to something simpler and something that we can actually solve fairly easily. And this structure, f of x squared is equal to x times f of x, I have seen this countless times in hundreds of functional equations problems. So the next few steps are rather going to be general steps that you can follow whenever you have something like this, f of x squared is equal to x times f of x. So let's just begin, right? So we're going to put x equals to minus x. Now when I do that, I'll get f of x squared again is equal to negative x times f of minus x. If you just notice the left hand side are the same, I can equate the right hand side. So x times f of x is equal to minus x times f of minus x. Just divide by x on both sides. So you will get that f of x is equal to negative of f of minus x. What does that mean? That means the function f is odd. f is an odd function.
right? So that's a pretty cool result. We've established a couple of interesting properties regarding the function f. First, the function f is an involution. It is equal to its inverse. And the second is it's an odd involution, right? It is an odd function as well. Now then, now I'm going to maybe plug in x equals to f of x and I'm going to plug in y is equal to f of y. Really a last substitution and we're just going to power through the solution from here. And when I do that, I'll get f of x squared plus y, you know, really simplifying down considering that's an involution. You'll get f of x squared plus y is equal to x times f of x plus f of y. But, but x times f of x is f of x squared, right? From equation number one, x times f of x is f of x squared. So what I can really write it as f of x squared plus y is equal to f of x squared plus f of y. And um, I can take x squared is equal to, let's say some quantity z. So f of z plus y is equal to f of z plus f of y. Now, if you know, this is the famous Cauchy's functional equation. It's the additive Cauchy, as some may call it. And the solution to that is very well known. It is f of z is equal to k times z. It's, it's a linear solution and um, therefore f of x is equal to k times x. So this method is giving us the solution f of x equal to kx. So k is really um, some constant, right? Now we need to determine what k is and it's very easy to determine when you plug in f of x equal to kx into the original functional equation. And when you really plug it into the original functional equation, you will easily see that k is equal to plus minus one. You'll get this condition that k squared is equal to one and hence k is equal to plus minus one. I'll leave that to yourself cause you all are are more than capable of doing that and once you get k is equal to plus or minus one so therefore f of x equals to plus minus x and over here we did not need to consider the point first trap at all because <laughs> we directly checked by putting it in the functional equation that um, f of x equal to kx and we got two values of k so therefore two functions that satisfy it plus x and minus x so pretty cool question indeed i think it does quite a little bit of justice too uh, in involutions and bijections, right? Couple of really interesting things and probably uh, the questions that really involve involutions and bijections are easy to solve, right? So essentially, once you've determined that a given function is bijective, right? Then you can really, then life becomes a lot simpler, right? Because then there are really some standard substitutions. X equal to f of x, y is equal to f of y. Like I said, the general f of x squared is equal to x times f of x. You'll see that so many times in functional equations, it's literally crazy, right? So um, once you've determined that the function is bijective, things become a lot easier for you, right? And uh, we saw that over here, the real goal was kind of trying to prove that it's bijective. Once you, once that uh, it got proven that it's bijective, after that things got simplified down quite a bit, right? So hope you learned something from that. Okay, so we have some book sessions in National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number Three by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur and Jill, Functional Equation by Venkata Chala. Problems in plain geometry by Sharigan, elementary number three by Sierpinski, graph theory by Harari, and combinatorics by Brualdi. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem. If f of x is a unique invertible function, now, what does this mean? First of all, f of x is unique. So there's only one solution to this, right? f of x is clearly unique, right? It is distinct. And it is an invertible function. So if it is invertible, that means it is bijective. So in our question, it's already given that it's a bijective function. If it is not bijective, then it's not invertible, right? Only bijective functions are invertible. So if f of x is a unique invertible function, or in other words, f of x is a unique bijective function, and f is defined from reals to reals, such that it satisfies this given functional equation, find the value of f of x. So they've kind of made it a little bit easier for you, I guess. <laughs> they've given the fact that f is bijective, but still, even despite that fact, this is a little bit of a challenge to do, right? So maybe try this out and if you're able to do it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit Chinta.com.